The holiday season is officially upon us. Well, for some of you, maybe it started around Halloween, but for me, I consider Thanksgiving Day at the beginning of the holiday season. And maybe that's just because Halloween just isn't that difficult for me. I might have one or two little pieces of candy, but that's it. And then there's just not that much in between Halloween and Thanksgiving. But Thanksgiving is when it all takes off and it runs through New Year's. So today I am going to give you 10 tips to help you stay really healthy through the holidays. So let's talk today about ways we can thrive this season, not just survive, but thrive. Welcome to Boom 50 Fitness. My name's Regan and this is your channel for all things health and fitness in your 50s and beyond. Today, we are going to talk about how we can stay healthy through the holidays and how you can help your family and friends do the same thing. Now listen, if you're watching this video and we're way past the holidays, stay tuned in because I use a lot of these tips even when it's not the holiday season. Now what would a video about healthy tips to make it through the holidays be without talking about nutrition, at least a little bit? Let's start off with nutrition. We will circle back to nutrition a few times during this video, but number one is to have a foundational meal. Again, this does not have to be just through the holiday season, but especially through the holiday season, make sure you have one meal, preferably breakfast, that sets you up for the rest of the day. And in that healthy meal, you want to get lots of protein and lots of fiber. I am going to link up above what I eat in a day and you will see my favorite breakfast. I call it my fake oatmeal. And it is loaded with protein, loaded with fiber, and it really just sets me up to have a really healthy day. Because when you eat that well first thing, why blow it later? So yes, I think breakfast is the perfect foundational meal actually every single day. Um, if you're going to a holiday breakfast or a holiday brunch, chances are this won't be your foundational meal that day. But make sure if you go to a brunch, you may not be eating again until dinner time. So your foundational meal will be your dinner. And that is actually going to carry over into the next day when your foundational meal starts with breakfast again. So yes, that foundational meal should be packed with protein and fiber. And one thing you wanna stay away from is the carbs. Try to keep that breakfast or lunch or dinner, whatever your foundational meal is, um, very, very low in carb or no carb completely because during the holiday season, we all know there is an abundance of carbs. And at that foundational meal, you'll be taking in the nutrients that your body needs and the nutrients that maybe you won't be getting later in the day. All right, so foundational meal, really important. If you can do two foundational meals, even better. All right, so we've got it, foundational meal. Hopefully you're doing this every day and it's okay if you're doing the same thing every single day, if it's something really, really healthy, um, like the oatmeal that I talked about earlier. It is just, it's a, just a tablespoon of oatmeal, but then it has chia, chia seed, flax seed, hemp seed, um, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, blueberries, almond butter, so it's just packed with so much. And then I have a hard boiled egg just to amp up the protein even more. So I'm starting off with my day with, I think it's 30 plus grams of protein every day. I mean, on the weekend, sometimes I skip my oatmeal and I make something that's a little bit more difficult and more time consuming to make. I love doing huge scrambles with um, just tons, just packed and packed and packed with protein and veggies and so good. Okay, so you get the idea foundational meal. You've got to have it. Um, let's move on to number two. You know that we were going to talk about movement. I mean, what would this channel be without us talking about movement a whole lot? And if you do watch this channel, you probably exercise. Maybe I've even convinced you to exercise, especially strength training. But during the holiday season, it's so important to try to stick 
to a fitness routine. It doesn't have to be the same routine that you do normally. You may have to mix it up. You may have to get a little creative. Maybe you don't have as much time to work out. That is normal during the holidays. You're running around, you're shopping, you're cooking, you're going to parties. Um, but really try to get those workouts in. So maybe you won't have that large chunk of time to get your workout in, but break it up into 10 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever you've got. Maybe you can do a few of those throughout the day and that's perfect, but you just have to move. One thing that I've done with clients um, during the holiday season, which is really fun, is um, actually, instead of scaling back, just adding 10 minutes of something. Uh, whether it's adding 10 minutes to your daily walk or you know maybe 10 minutes of squats and lunges after you know a big chest or back day or just upper body day just something that's just 10 more minutes maybe it's just 10 minutes of stretching but something that's going to be good for your body and that actually makes you move a little more if you're thinking no way i don't have time for that i'm too busy try it. I think you have the time. Just 10 more minutes. I'm going to do this with you. I'm going to add 10 minutes of walking, 10 minutes of extra walking every single day um, until after New Year's. And if the weather's coming and I don't feel like walking, I'll pop on that bike right there and uh, just ride for 10 minutes. So yeah, it doesn't have to be 10 more minutes of hardcore exercise, just 10 more minutes of movement. I promise you it will do a body good. Okay, let's pop back to nutrition, which I do have a few more tips on nutrition. But um, number three is to eat before you go to a party. Do not starve yourself all day knowing that you're probably going to indulge that night. Remember, you've got your foundational meal, maybe it was breakfast, maybe it was lunch, your uh, party's later in the day. Before you leave the house, maybe as you're getting ready, I do this all the time when I'm getting ready to go to a party, I eat um, you know, an apple with some almond butter, or I eat some nuts, or I eat a meat stick, um, something with some protein. Again, if you could sneak a little fiber in there, even better. And I'll drink a big glass of water with it. So if you eat an apple that's filled with fiber and some almond butter, and you drink a big glass of water, that is going to fill you up. And that's so much better than getting to a party and just being ravenous. Okay, here's a tip within the tip. Don't eat cheese before going to a party. Why? Well, a lot of us are creatures of habit and we'll reach for the same cheeses that we have at the house. And I don't think I know one person who doesn't like cheese. And if you go to a party, there's probably going to be some delicious cheeses. In fact, I don't think I've ever been to a cocktail party or a dinner party where there wasn't some cheese. So that's my little tip within the tip. Don't eat cheese for your little pre-party snack. And water should be included in that pre-party snack. It fills you up. And then also go into that party really, really hydrated. So this isn't on my list of tips, but I'm just gonna put it out there that don't just have that water um, as your pre-party hydration. Be drinking that water throughout the day. Um, I always think it's a great idea to monitor the amount of water you're taking in so that you know you're getting some significant amounts of water. But um, just, just another thing to amp up just a little bit because you will be indulging a little bit and a lot of times uh, the types of foods that you're going to be indulging in um, just have a little bit extra salt. So just drink lots of water. Okay, number four, we have to talk about this because I think this is so important to have a healthy, well-rounded diet, and that is to indulge a little bit. In fact, I think it's more unhealthy to go through the holidays and not indulge a little bit. And I don't mean go to a party and just eat whatever you want. I mean indulge with intention. So when you get to a party and there's some big spread out there, take a moment to decide what 
you really, really want. And try to go for the foods that are not processed. So skip all the crackers that you know came out of a box and go for, you know, the delicious cookies or the pie that Aunt Sue made. So yes, indulge with intention. And on the same lines as that is just be mindful about what you're eating. So if you are going for that delicious piece of pie, sit down next to a friend and have a nice conversation as you eat that pie. Really enjoy every single bite, savor every single bite, and uh, enjoy it. Indulge a little bit, please. But also know that if you don't put everything on your plate, you're not being rude. You do not have to eat everything that's at the party and you don't have to go in thinking, I've got to try everything. No, you don't. Just reach for the things you know you really want and again, go for the whole food items. I actually think indulgence is a topic that a lot of people just get really, really wrong. And you've probably seen it maybe with yourself or maybe with friends or family. The person who goes out to dinner but won't take a bite of the dessert or, you know, has a salad while we're all enjoying, you know, a delicious steak and french fries. And that's fine. But I do think that food is one of uh, the small pleasures in life and the more you take things away, the more you're going to want them. So that's the perfect reason to just indulge a little bit here and there. Okay, number five. I love this one and I am totally guilty of this, um, but I'm actually guilty of not doing this. But if you're going to a party and everyone is bringing a dish, be that person that brings a healthy dish. That way, you know you're gonna be able to eat at least moderately healthy by eating your dish. And I promise you, people will appreciate it, especially when they have been overindulging a little bit too much. So don't think that your friends and family are not gonna appreciate it if it's not loaded with sugar and super unhealthy. No, they, the people there will appreciate it because I promise there will be all that other stuff there that people can choose from. You're probably not the only one at the party that wants to eat healthy. Okay, number six, do not drink your calories. Um, I know this is where there are always a lot of hidden calories where you may think you've eaten so well, but you've been drinking the whole night. So let's not do that this year. Um, one of the rules that I go by, I have a two drink minimum rule, um, and maybe that doesn't sound that much fun, but I'm not a huge drinker, so I'm telling you, when I have those two drinks, um, I get a nice little buzz, but in between those drinks, I always drink a big glass of water. And, um, and when I do drink those drinks, I drink them nice and slow. And who wants to wake up after a big party and have a hangover during the holiday season? No, not me. So besides alcohol, you know alcohol is going to be served at some of these parties you go to. And you know what? It's okay to say no. If you were at a party last night and you had two or three glasses of wine, and you have a party tonight, maybe make that choice not to drink. And nobody even really has to know. You could have a glass full of bubbly water with a lime in it, and everyone's gonna think you're drinking a cocktail. So if you are drinking more during the holidays, it is going to show up on your body later, either as a weight gain or inflammation. So try to keep the drinking at a minimum. But also be aware of um, just meeting up with people at random places like coffee shops or going out to breakfast because all those drinks, you know, if you're drinking cappuccinos and um, mimosas, all of those things will add up as well. Speaking of drinking, I've got my creatine and my element, my two faves. My little drink here rolls me right into number seven, and that is going to be on 
supplementation, which next week I'm going to do a whole video on all the supplements I take. But during the holiday season, don't forget to take your vitamins and whatever supplements you take. Um, like I said, this is creatine and element. I will never stop drinking the creatine. If I go on vacation, I might not bring the element with me, but with creatine, it builds up in your system over time. So you wanna keep it there. And oh my gosh, it's so great for building muscle. Check out um, my video on creatine. I actually have a couple and um, I've turned so many people onto it and they have noticed huge, huge differences. So yeah, don't forget to take your supplements. You're not going to be eating as healthy as you normally do. Um, well, maybe you will be. I would love it if you did and then just indulged a little bit here and there. That would be perfect. But just don't skip taking those vitamins. I know for a lot of people, they just forget and forget and forget. Stick it on your calendar. I have a reminder, I have the little ding that goes off so I never ever forget to take my supplements. And you know what? The supplements won't work if they're just sitting in your medicine cabinet or sitting in your pantry. Take them and don't forget because there's a good chance that you paid a lot of money for them because they're not cheap. Number eight, when it comes to health and fitness, this should take top priority. Yes, top priority. What is it? It is your precious sleep. And your sleep might get thrown off a little bit. Maybe you're at a late night party and you're having a great time and you don't feel like leaving and you don't get to bed until one or two in the morning. Well, the next day, chances are you're gonna feel kind of sluggish. The best thing you can do is try to get up around the same time as you normally do. Maybe you could extend it by about an hour, but any more than that, it will really throw off your sleep schedule. So try to get up as close to the time as you normally would wake up. And then if you need to during the day, as long as it's before four o'clock, you could squeeze in you know, a 20 minute power nap, but you don't wanna be sleeping much longer than that. And then that night, as long as you don't have another party, um, try to get back on your normal sleep schedule. I'm gonna link another video down below on um, 10 healthy sleep habits. So if you don't have a sleep routine, it is time to get one. It will be life-changing. So it's really important to get your Z's, but again, don't sleep in trying to catch up on the sleep. You wanna just get up as close to your normal sleep schedule as possible. And then through the days ahead, you can sneak in those 20 minute naps, or what you could do is skip the nap and then try to crawl into bed, you know, about a half hour earlier than you normally would. And you know, if you have been blowing it out at parties and having fun, there's a good chance you're gonna fall asleep a little bit earlier. Get your sleep, so, so, so important. Okay, number nine is a tough one for a lot of people, but acknowledge that it's a stressful season. I used to be so guilty of this. I'm like, I'm not stressed, I'm not tired, I can get it all done. But you have to realize that the stress doesn't really go anywhere unless you acknowledge that it's there. And maybe you have that perfect family and you have your perfect parties and everyone always gets along and everything is just perfect, perfect, perfect. But that usually is not the case. And for every single person out there, stress is going to creep in at least a little bit during the holiday season. And by the way, who wants a perfect family? Like. It's our imperfections that make us so fun. One of the things I have done throughout life in stressful situations is I just think I can just push through it. I can overcome, but you have to address the stress. I like it, address the stress. Cause what's gonna happen if you don't address the stress, it's gonna bring more stress into your life. Stop pushing it down. You've got to address it. And uh, some of the things that I find really, really helpful and that I do every day now um, are journaling and meditation. 
The journaling is great because you can get all those stressful thoughts down on paper. And a lot of times when you read them back, you're like, huh, that's not so bad. Um, or maybe they are really stressful situations that you just wrote about and you've freed your mind of that at least temporarily. And then the meditation, I mean, that's just all goodness all around. I will link down below my favorite meditation app. It's called Headspace and I do it every single day. I, it's kind of like beginner meditation. It's the, I like to have a guided meditation because uh, I'm not there yet to do it on my own. So I love these guided five minute meditations. Sometimes I do them when I'm out for my walks, um, but I find them so helpful and just, it helps so much to alleviate stress. Okay, number 10 is just say no. If you're a homebody like me, you don't always wanna go to the big party. Sure, we wanna get invited to things and we like to be choosy about what we do, but I don't have to go to two parties in a row. I don't have to say yes to every single thing that I get invited to. And you know what? I have no guilt about it. So we moved on from stress and now we're talking about just say no, but they really do go hand in hand. It is so crazy important to have boundaries and to have limits. I know what my limits are. So one thing that I do now is if I receive an evite, I look at the date of the party and I try to jump into the future and think, okay, if it is the morning of the party, Am I going to be dreading it all day? And if the answer is yes, then I respond that I can't go. And do you know when I respond? I respond as soon as possible. Do you know why? You've probably done this. You've gotten the evite. Maybe you responded, maybe. Maybe you even responded yes. But then for the couple weeks leading up to it, you keep thinking about it. You're like, what should I wear? I have nothing to wear. So-and-so's going, I don't really wanna see them or whatever it is. It is so much easier to say no right away. And you can say why, you know, sometimes you're just, you, you've, you've overextended yourself and um, you just are not gonna be up for that party. It's not rude to say no. What is rude is to say yes, and then the day of that party, come up with some excuse for why you didn't go. I wish I could remember who gave me that piece of advice, but it is golden. The fact that all the weeks leading up to that party, you're thinking about it and creating more and more stress in your mind should be a good indication that yeah, maybe you should have just said no right away. So I hope you take that little piece of advice and just say no if you don't want to go. And that brings me to the end of the 10 tips to stay healthy through this holiday season. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Ring that notification bell right there so you're the first to know as soon as a new video drops. And I guess that is about it. My name's Regan. This is Boom 50 Fitness, your new BFF. I'll see you next Thursday. And remember, I'm gonna be teaching you all about supplementation and I'm gonna tell you all the supplements that I take. I can't wait to see you then. Happy holidays.